What's up guys, this is Sherry talking, welcome back to my channel, in today's video we'll talk about the battle with Rio Queen. This is a Global X event that I didn't know, that's why it's just so hard. Indeed, we'll be talking about how to defeat this fight, but it may not be for you, because this is very, very hard. You can just clear stage number 20 and be done with, you're gonna get some gens. But if you wanna go for real challenges, there is the romancing stage and the serious challenges that can be pretty hard depending on what you have available in your account. But let's talk about the romancing fight first to understand. That also applies to all the other stages as well. Here you fight versus the real queen. And she attacks with all three physical types, but she focuses more on blunt and has one attack that has fire and heat. That's not a problem. She can also apply Poison, Darkness, Stun, Paralyze, and Sleep. Okay, Poison and Darkness are not that important, but the other three can kill you, because they will remove your uh, damage reduction. So, she's weak to all three physical types and Shadow. So, you can bring any of these things and you do some good damage. And she's behind, but you can attack her anytime the minions will appear. You have to fight versus four minions, and she will just summon them again every three turns if you don't kill them. If they are alive, she will not summon. So, they will also get stronger as time goes on. She will keep buffing them every three turns. And there is more stuff here. She will remove all the buffs by the end of a turn. But the buffing is still viable. Because she has such a high status that if you debuff Rio Queen, you will avoid being inflicted with ailments. Will buff also works, but it looks like even if you buff a lot, well, sometimes you can still get inflicted with ailments. I will explain why during the fight so that you can understand better. So, try to kill the minions, and then when go for Rio Queen, you need to be careful about the end of the second turn. In the third turn as well, because she will do some crazy stuff. But, the first important thing about this fight is Earthquake. This is a skill that is different here. She would do fixed damage. Yes, that's right. 30% of your HP. And you cannot do anything about it to reduce. You just have to have that amount in order to survive. If you get poisoned, that means that you will lose another 10%. So... It's hard, because she will use this in the end of a turn after many different attacks. So, Scrum Guard, defensive capabilities like Guard Up, Defense Boost, Morale Down, Attack Down, everything here helps. You need to stack as much as possible in order to survive. So, let's talk about the first squad. This will cover both the Romancing stage and also the other stage that you can bring. US, ES, SSG, and Saga RS styles. Why? Because we are going to bring the Saga RS originals. They are just overpowered and they are going to handle both stages. So, what works here will work there. So, the formation here that I'm bringing is Rising Phoenix Axe. And this is important because, well, even with will buffs, you still get inflicted with AMS if you don't care. Because she will remove all your will buffs by the end of turn 2. Uh, and that will just enter a cycle and she will do the same on the end of turn 5 and then again on the end of the turn 8 and that will keep happening. So you have to just be prepared or you, you get confused, paralyzed, you get sleep and you just easily die when she starts nuking. So, uh, Rising Phoenix X is nice. There is another formation that will also work depending on how many uh, debuffers or buffers you have. That will be Seer Focus X. But I will just use Rising Phoenix X because this formation works for this particular team. Counter Strategy works really well because we have characters that will just trigger additional effects. And many enemies on the field allow for many different counters. Well, we have here Liz. She gives this uh, Karatsu Water Wall spell, and this decreases damage taken by 50%. That's insane, and well, when she gets uh, attacked directly, she will counter uh, once, if you don't have Karatsu Water Wall, but if you do have it on overdrive, she will counter two times, getting more BP to use this more often. The same with uh, Polka. He will have access to Steel Blade Phoenix, and when he's on overdrive, he will also counter it, rising Kuroge Wagyu. That is just very powerful. But the real thing here is this Bertrand. 
Well, Global X Bertrand can solo this stage, yes, because he may even get inflicted with Charm. If he gets inflicted with Charm, he will not get inflicted with Paralyze, because it takes precedence. It's more important, so they will not remove Charm. And if Charm is affected, Bertrand will kill all members of the party, but after that, he starts going after your real queen. So, he can solo. Try to fix all the defenses of your characters. For example, Bertrand is natively weak to Blunt, like other Sword users, and that the same can be said for Polka. In the case of Liz, she's weak to Slash. So, those three characters are the most important here. But we have two backup units, that is, Melissa. Because Melissa will buff Agility and Intelligence, but not just that, she also buffs Will and Charisma. Will will help us avoid getting inflicted with ailments in each turn that can be multiplied by 3. And Witch Daughter is here to give BP to some of the characters that I want to get more BP and also buff on every turn multiplied by 3 to avoid getting inflicted with ailments. Well, let's go and check the boss fight so that we can understand. Okay, so the fight starts, you see four Thermites here, they can attack you with direct attacks, indirect attacks as well, most of them will be direct on the first cycle, on the first turn. By turn four, they seem to like to use indirect attacks more often, even through it's just one attack. Uh, then, let's talk about uh, Real Queen. She has many things, like on critical HP, she gets stronger. On the start of the round, she gets a buff to a currency, but that's only once you can actually evade in this fight, although it's not so easy. And then on the start of a turn, she will give a heat up to all the termites, so the more they stay alive, the stronger they are. You kill them, it resets. Also, on every three turns, she will get this stance where she will have delay. That means that you can debuff her even through she will cleanse on the end of a turn, or buff your will, even through she will just remove that later, to avoid ailments in that particular turn. This was made to sell cards like Maria that can buff status ailments, because that cannot be dispelled. So you bring Maria and uh, buff ailment resistance four times in a row, you are protected. But I don't have Maria, many people won't have, so we have to find alternatives. And then you see that, yeah, by the end of turn, she will remove all debuffs. Okay, so that's it. Let's start the fight. And Bertrand, in my case, I will be using Booming Fireworks because he gives VP to the party. Liz will use Karatsu Water Wall on the first turn because we don't have many buffs. And Polka will just use Rising Phoenix as well because right now we are going to take full damage. Melissa will keep using Elegant Prayers, even through I will lose my will buff in a point, all the other buffs will stay here, even the Agility one. And I'll give BP to Bertrand so that he can use Blooming Fireworks again. He's gonna counter everyone that uses Direct Attacks on him, Rising Phoenix Axe already increases his intelligence, but also his will, his defense. Let's see how it goes, this attack will also cover sometimes more than one enemy, depending on who is attacking Bertrand. This fight is not really long, it's just hard. Twin Goldfish, this time it was one of the Termites, he will counter two enemies. He will stack so many attack and defense boots that he is just unkillable, eventually. See that one Termite's already dead. When Liz counters, she also self heals, gets BP, that's why they become super defensive. Blooming Fireworks, gave BP to the party. So got a little more BP. This attack is AoE, but direct, so everyone will counter. It's nice, you see lots of counter making combos even. It's a lot of fun to use this strategy. Ice Cream Galahad also works here, but he takes some time to become super strong, so I prefer to use the Polka family first. Bertrand just keeps getting stronger and stronger and stronger and unkillable. Let's see how much on this hit. 156,000. Earthquake! That's the attack. You saw 750 HP damage. That cannot be reduced, mitigated by any way. But uh, Melissa negated because she has a passive that uh, negates damage for one turn. She was not hit before that. 
Um, characters that have evasion with intrinsic passives or other types will also have a chance to evade. Uh, healing on the lay is very nice here because right after Earthquake you will heal. If you were poisoned you can heal before the damage from poison. So that's why it can be really useful on this fight. Bertrand will just go back to using Blooming Fireworks and Lins will also use Karatsu Waterwall because in Overdrive she can get more instances of it. To be honest, I don't really need Steel Blade Phoenix, but, well, it's better to be safe than sorry, right? And now we'll give um, Festival Food to Liz, because I prefer to decrease damage taken than to heal right now. By the second turn, you can see already poison and some ailments from Rio Queen, but more poison. Being shot is very strong, see 500 damage versus Witch Daughter that has two damage reduction passives, and I just used Karatsu Water Wall. But she just evaded, right? They will start evading the minions much faster than they can actually evade real queen. So we counter it, we got even more damage reduction, more BP, more counters. Sometimes it's good to have some of the Thermites alive on turn 2, because they would just trigger more counters. Okay, HP is full. And this is the turn where we lost all our wheel buffs. And I'll just use another Blooming Fireworks on Real Queen to give more BP to the party. And I really need Karatsu Water Wall. If, if I have available, let's use it. Why not? Uh, you can also just instead use Aqua Bash if you do not have more buffers in the back row because this will buff Will. Remember, you need to buff Will or debuff the intelligence of Real Queen. So let's go and use Karatsu Water Wall. And I don't have enough BP to do anything with uh, Polka, so he's just gonna do a normal attack, I guess. That's right. You can also just use Heart to Stick on Bertrand so that he becomes. Uh, uh, someone with a Hegion that can help, but it's not really needed. Just use Elegant Prayers and Witch Daughter will use um, Sweet Smell on Overdrive. Sweet Smell on Overdrive is already enough to block you from getting humans because she will buff 40% of all status. We'll protect you. She's gonna kill all the termites, yes. So you're pretty much safe. We buffed so many status. Gave BP to the party. Bertrand is healing. I'm buffing Will again. This fight is pretty simple with these units, but it can be so hard with the other challenges that it really makes no much sense. We're still good, taking a lot of damage even though we have damage reduction, guys. This boss here is insane. So now I don't have enough BP <laughs> with Bertrand, so I will just use Wind. But I still have Karatsu Water Wall, that's what matters. And I also have Rising Phoenix X, Home Overdrive, I will use it, just to have a better counter. Elegant Prayers. Sweet Smell, yeah, why not? We may kill uh, Rio Queen by turn 5. I guess that's what's gonna happen. But remember that you need to stay on high HP by the end of turn 4 because we just got back to cycle of the first turn. Earthquake will happen. Nice, uh, another Karatsu Water Wall. We're barely taking any damage now. Two instances off, 50% reduction. It's awesome. Even if you evade, you counter as well. Polka counter also gets uh, attack boost. See, I told you that in this turn 40 we use more indirect attacks, and they are doing it. 
seems to be coded like this. Stone shower. Indirect. But okay, Bertrand is getting buffed. Doesn't matter if he's countering. His damage is just scaling. Insanely. Rising Kuroge Wagyu. Earthquake. 750. Permanent damage. That's it. It's over. It's our turn to finish this fight. We can even use Twin Gold Fish, but I will use Blooming Fireworks just because I can. I don't have enough BP for Karatsu, but... Warding Bow. Steel Blade Phoenix. Elegant Prayers. And the last, Sweet Smell. It can look super simple, right? But on the serious challenges, it becomes a nightmare. Because the other units are not that strong as... RS originals. They really are not. It's over with Witch's Daughter. So, this strategy works for RS originals in Romancing Stage. So, I'll be back with different videos to showcase other strategies. If you cannot do this fight, wait till the end of a month. This lasts for 30 days. But thanks so much for watching this video. I hope it helps. And I see you later in the next one. Bye.